Beautiful, beautiful. All right, um, in this video, I want to um, want to talk about a little meditation techniques. I mean, it's love meditation techniques. You know, something practical to do in the physical world. Um, but it's not technique so much as why you're doing the thing in the first place. So that's the point of it. Um, just in case anybody was wondering, tomorrow night we're gonna continue the timeless knowledge tour. We're on stop number eight. Um, so that jumps back on tomorrow. Had to take care of the holiday stuff. So back to business, back to business. Um, but yeah, that's what I want to talk about today is, is the fourth wall meditation. And I kind of want to get into, first of all, why you'd even want to do something like this. All right. <clears throat> oh. So, as I've been um, as I've been preparing for the shitstorm for the next season, um, fleshing out my um my self deification courses, and um, just generally contemplating my services and whatnot, um, I've been trying to not only pin down but articulate what it is people are looking for. Because they're not looking for a new, the, the, the newest or latest God to worship. You'll find some people who are like that. They're looking for the newest, latest God to worship. Or I worship this, I worship that, or I, I'm a, a Patreon of this, or whatever the fuck. Um, that's changing what you think. I'm not interested in changing what you think. I want to change how you think. Most people aren't looking in the correct direction. Most people you... You're going to hear what, what, they, what they label as spiritual information is going to be some supernatural account of Western science, okay? That's not, what I'm, that's not what I'm giving you. That's not what we're talking about. When they say go within, where is that? What does that mean? How does that work? All right, it's not, it's not like I've said before, it's not cells and melanin. You know, it's not activating kundalini oil. I, I was contemplating whether or not I wanted to go into explaining what the fuck kundalini is so motherfuckers stop looking for it in the physical body but that's probably another video altogether um but okay here's the thing what's the direction on go within what does that mean okay um you can take you can take the idea first of all that you're not the body. Everybody knows that one. Everybody does that. Everybody goes, okay, I'm not the body. I'm not the body. Uh, the physical world is an illusion. Okay, I got you. Cool, cool. Won't disagree with you. Um, but this is where people's reasoning starts to fuck up. And I get it. You know, they, they, because I've been there too. They go to the whole, everything is all one thing and it's all this one giant mind consciousness thing. And then that's it. You know, they may th they may throw a few extra words out there, but they don't develop any ontology. Anyway, that's what I want to focus on with this fourth wall meditation. OK. What direction within is. OK. Um, it's not a spatial direction. So going in your body isn't the thing. Upgrading and activating your DNA isn't the thing. All right. Um there's two phases to this. Here's the first phase. Okay. Um, I want you to, to, to get in touch with the idea of the fourth wall. Everybody knows about it. Okay. You ever doing some, 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 you living life, you're doing some regular shit and something off the wall happens and you just kind of look at the camera for the studio audience. You know how they do on TV. They look at the camera for the studio audience and you just look at the camera for the studio audience, that direction. It doesn't matter which way you pointed your head. You can go like this. Like this, like this, doesn't matter. It's not about which way you're pointing your head. It's about where you're pointing your awareness. The fact that your head is moving is is, is part of how you're framing your idea of, of self and and uh, your, your your positionality in reality. All right, that, that's not what we're talking about. Because your positionality in reality has little to do with your physical body because you're not your physical body, right? Anyways... <clears throat> That's that's getting in touch with the idea of the direction. Okay, that's not the, that's not the the meditation though, but 
so you have an idea of what it is we're talking about, okay? Because everybody does it. A lot of people do the thing where you look at the studio audience, all right? That's called breaking the fourth wall. You're looking at your own fourth wall. But if you're going within, you need to be on the other side of that fourth wall. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And see, here's the trick. Here's the trick. You never left Kansas, so you're already on the other side. But it's about it's about being able to be aware of it, to to feel it in in, in so many words. Okay, so this is what you do, and um, you know I'd suggest you know being maybe being high, or or um, doing some some really deep breath med- breath work where where your attention can can drift a little bit, where the idea of dissociating with your physical body as yourself is a little bit easier. But what you want to do is you want to feel your awareness moving through your fourth wall and expressing itself physically. Example, um, carrot. See, I'm saying the word carrot with my body, okay? But before that happens... And it happens very quickly, so you have to pay attention to see the nuance in it. The idea of carrot comes up. The 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 um the push, the uh, the the push to push it forward. I guess you could say forward and out. And like even that, you can think you can think carrot all day, but never say it. But there's a space between the thinking of it and the saying it, where where your intention is moving through that fourth wall. And that's the point of the meditation, okay? You don't need to be sitting some weird way if you don't want to. You know, you can do this anytime, essentially. But to start off, it's probably best to, you know, get really relaxed so you can pay attention and, and, and focus, all right? Um, so what you're doing is you're you're waiting to to feel the transition over that fourth wall, all right? You're waiting to feel the transition from thought to word, of what it is you're doing, okay? Remember, I told you the direction for within is on the other side of that fourth wall. But you need to get a grasp of the fact that you're already there, all right? And you can do that by watching, feeling your intention move through that fourth wall, okay? <clears throat> That's, and, and, and it's a very basic exercise. It's a very basic exercise, especially for somebody who's saying, hey, you know, um, um, I'm not my body. Um, you know, the physical world is illusionary. It's a very easy exercise to do, especially if that's what you say you already believe. <sighs> now, I, I did say the point of it is to see yourself already on the other side of that fourth wall. All right, get the idea of what within means. Because most people, when they're talking about within, they're saying something about Western science. And... Western science and the symmetries of space-time. Western science describes the behavior of the symmetries of space-time. It does not tell you what the funda- fundamental nature of reality is. So anybody who's equating, you know, souls to something in your physical body, you know, uh, chakras or something in your physical body, you can correspond whatever you want to whatever you want all day. All right, that's not what the that's not what the thing originated from. Like with this Christmas shit, you see so many people talking about. You know, what's in the spine and the, you know, the the Christmas tree with the star on top, you know, it's the crown chakra. It's like, you can correspond anything to anything else all day, okay? You want to get in here and and get get into the feel of the participation of this. Because a lot of people are trying to explain ultimate reality. They don't even really have a grasp of how the tools work to do that, but even then, even if, let's say, whatever whatever you decide to describe ultimate reality as, I'll just tell you, I'll tell you it's right for the sake of the argument here, okay? Uh, I probably wouldn't agree, but we'll say it's right for the sake of the argument. Um, simply having propositional knowledge about, or, or, or just propositional description of the reality at large is not, it's not telling you how to participate. And I think that's what people are looking for. How do I participate in reality at large? Okay. Um, you know, with the old cultures and religions, they answered the question of 
what is reality at large, what is the nature of the self, and what is the continuity between the two things, okay? So most people out here who are talking spirituality, who are looking for this, looking for that, they don't, they don't know those are the questions they're asking. Those are the fundamental questions they're asking. How do I know that? Because that's what religion asks for you. That's the whole that was left when you abandoned religion. Oh, it wasn't true. It wasn't correct. It wasn't real. Okay, well, what is real? That's what you really got to get into. Especially if you're one of these people talking about the physical world as an illusion or it's a hologram. Same difference. Illusion doesn't mean it's not real. It means it's not what it appears to be. Okay, so it's, it's, it could all be so simple. But you got to, you ha to, to really get that, you have to check how it is you're framing reality. What it is you're calling reality. Mm -mm. Because when you do the fourth wall meditation and you can, you can, you can begin to naturally feel that fourth wall. You can feel the things that are bumping up against it, the things that are pressing into it. You can start to examine the world beyond it. But when you're just thinking, talking, reacting, all those things that you would see in the meditation happen instantaneously uh, because you're not used to looking for them. You're not used to looking for that space where that would be. Uh. <sighs> It's, it's it's redundant to say that it's all mind, okay? Like the, it's all mind. It's all consciousness. It's all it's all um it's all one thing. Is basically what that argument is. It's all one thing, and oneness has a nature to it. It it has structure or rules to it, and not rules because hey, I said they're rules. Like, 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 for example, the, uh, the seven hermetic principles. Okay. Uh, you can call them the principles of Hootie, but I don't care who you say made them the principles. Okay. The principles unfold from each other. You know, they're not just, they're not arbitrary rules. All right. They're, they're, they are the implications of the idea that all things are one thing. Okay. Those, that's what those principles are expressing the implications of the fact that all things are one thing see the first one's the only one that's actually a rule everything else is based on that the other six are based on that okay uh for example uh the 42 laws of Maat. you know have people look at the 42 laws of Maat and think well these are the original commandments and it's and it's, it's fucking stupid the 42 the 42 laws of Maat work like this um throughout anyone's physical life you will do at least one thing on there, okay? It's not about living a physical life where you do none of those things. It's about identifying with the part of yourself that is not in this world because that thing never does any of those. That's the point of the 42 laws of my eye. They're not new rules for physical life. There aren't rules for physical life. There are consequences, there's cause and effect, but there are no rules, there, there are no rules. Like the idea that you're better off not being dead. It's a presumption many people would make. It's not necessarily the case. And so you want to look at the underlying presumptions you're making about how you're framing reality to begin with. But this is part of the reason I'm suggesting this fourth wall meditation, okay? Because once you can start to, you can bump against that fourth wall. You can feel the, the um, what's the word I want to use? You can feel the tension or the dissonance. You can feel the vibration of it. God, just saying the word vibration hurt me there. But you feel it vibrate. That's not, I'm not saying that you have to vibrate that and that's how you raise your vibration. No, no, I will not suggest to you you need to raise your vibration. Because then you have to think about what's vibrating. And if everything is all one thing, there's no room for vibration. You got to come down. See, that's why vibration is a third principle. Because you don't have the you don't you only have the foundations for it at one and two. You don't have all the things you need for vibration. Vibration. Why do I say you need? It has to be the third one. Vibration is is um back, forth, and center. Three positions. Any wave, any vibration. That's 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 what characterizes vibration. The back and forth and center. Okay. It gets into. The um the structure of the sine wave, which is the basically the equation for a circle on a graph. 
It gets into that back and forth and center. So you got the three positions. That's what substantiates the possibility of vibration, which is why the third principle is vibration. They're not arbitrary rules somebody made up. All right, they, they're not simply observations of, of existence. They, they unfold out of each other from, from, from a philosophical realm. But, but they're doing it logically. They're doing it in, 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 a, um, in a concise way, I would say. Um, okay, so yeah, the fourth wall meditation. Because I, I, when I come out with the shitstorm again in the next season, I'm going to talk about this some more. Um, so I want to have already laid some foundation for it. Oh, Mercury is in retrograde. <laughs> Merc is in Rick. <laughs> hey, hey, oh, look. This is some shit I will talk about then. I already talked about the meditation. Um, I was watching this thing. Um, there's a there's a YouTube channel called Jubilee where they do this thing where they have two different groups of people talk to each other or answer you know uh, stage questions and whatnot. Well, I won't say stage. I'll say pre-scripted questions. You know, uh, they're usually pretty typical questions. But anyways, this particular episode was astrologers versus astronomers and it was it was very indicative of people's understanding of astrology um if you missed it the the season finale of the shit storm was a lecture on the zodiac all right the zodiac is separate from astrology and astronomy um the zodiac is the 12-fold pattern it's the the ultimate the, the supreme mixation of three and four okay um First, you have three, then four, mind or matter. Uh, then you have three plus four, which is seven. And then you have um, three times four, which is them mixing in with each other. Uh, so that's the 12-fold pattern. Um, astronomy is the study of celestial bodies. It's a branch of Western science at this point, really. Um, <sighs> so astronomy is not astrology. And astrology is not the zodiac. Astrology uses the zodiac and astronomy to create a whole other branch of ideas, okay? Um, and so the way most motherfuckers are, are, are missing astrology is, is their, their, their view of the things are too myopic, all right? Astrology is the music of the spheres, all right? Um, like, this is, this is part of the reason why um, your, your natal chart, your birth chart, will be a little bit more accurate in describing your default settings as opposed to just your sun sign, okay? Because it works within a dynamic. So that's part of the reason you need to know the Zodiac before you try and do astrology. Because in, in understanding the Zodiac, you know that all of the signs exist within each other. They are a dynamic. None of them exist independently, all right. None of the signs exist independently. They all exist in a dynamic and a flow with each other, just the same way you have with the um, the four elements. OK, they exist together. They're part of each other. And so any of the any of the the things you'll get from the signs, um, they're 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 intermixed in a dynamic. And it's more the dynamic, the end result of the dynamic than it is any individual notes uh, like a symphony, for example. Um, and so, yes, the, the celestial bodies can have an effect on physical, on, on, on the things on the surface of the planet, most certainly. Um, and, and, and the reason I bring it up in terms of the video is because, you know, they were asking the people whether or not astrology is a science and the people who were, who were supporting the side of astrology did a terrible job. They did a terrible job. Um, because really the only way that the astronomers were going to understand astrology is from a Western science perspective. And it's not to say, you know, astrology doesn't have that. It does, you know, uh, each of the, each of the celestial bodies emits their own um, vibrational frequencies, their own uh, types of radiation, uh, heat, et cetera, et cetera. And so you have these different bodies moving around in a field, you know, what you would call the vacuum. Uh, but the vacuum is full of different radiation. Like that's part of the reason the planet needs an atmosphere before it can support life because the sun is pouring out radiation. Well, well if, if you're a flat earther, um, you know, I, I, I guess none of this means anything. <laughs> Fucking flat earth. Okay. Sorry. Excuse me. 
Um, so yeah, the planet is sitting in a sea of radiation, and this radiation is being altered by the different things that move through it, i.e. other planets. The reason astrology is significant is because we move in a circle, or, or more, more accurately, an elliptical pattern. That's why astrology that's why astrology can be consistent. The same with numerology. It's because numbers move in a repeating pattern, you can find patterns within that pattern. And that's what the astrology does. Because we move in an elliptical pattern, you can find patterns within the pattern. And astrology is mapping out the patterns within the pattern. So now, how people interpret astrological things, like natal charts, or, um, you know, they, they'll, they'll, they'll say, you know, like, uh, for example, Mercury's in retrograde. How they interpret things like that um, that's it's just people's personal reasoning, and that's where things start to fall away. Um, <sighs> hollow, perhaps. What you mean, Ethan? I don't know what you mean. Um, I'm not sure what I was talking about when you wrote that. Um, so yeah, the people who 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 purport astrology, they generally don't have a separate understanding of the zodiac nor of, of dynamical systems. And that's what you really need to be able to do astrology properly, is an understanding of dynamical systems. Hollow Earth? Bro, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. <laughs> oh, God. No, no, don't do this to me. Not the Hollow Earth. Because, look, if this is the case. If the Hollow Earth is the case, you have to, you have to redo all of geology as well. Like, that's the reason these different branches of Western science and their descriptivism work is because they coincide. And so if you change, if you change a fundamental understanding of uh, uh, one, one, one big branch of, um, of Western science, it takes away the rest of the things, you know, like, like, for instance, you know, the flat earth people, um, you know, well, where, where, do, where, where do they stand on atomic, um, atomic, uh, atomic physics? Okay, because atomic physics mirrors the physics you see in large planetary bodies. The idea of caverns and shit. Yeah, there's plenty, plenty of caverns, but the planet is not hollow. The the the, the planet is not hollow. Because when this, and this is one of those interesting things about hollow Earth. Like when people think the planet Earth, they think the surface. They they think the crust. It's like you thinking about your body and only thinking about not only just the skin but the top layer. Like it's a system it's 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 a being it's not some hollow rock it's not a rock with trees on it you know so a lot of those things they they're trying so hard to find the correct answer that you know they're not looking at the means they use to get to the ends I'm saying with the flat earth people, you're not looking to at what it means. What are the implications of me saying that this is the truth? Which is why most of the time they'll just be, well, I don't really know. I don't really know. I don't really know. Well, then, you know, maybe you should listen for a while. If you don't really know, you should probably listen for a while. Uh, but if a nigga think he already know, he ain't going to ask a question. So he ain't got no business listening. He ain't trying to listen. He already know. Ugh. Uh. Space-time is not fundamental. Space-time is not fundamental. And I'm going to have a whole series, a whole episode on this when I do the shitstorm again. Space-time is not fundamental. Any of the symmetries of space-time are not fundamental to reality. So anything that's telling you about saving niggas on Earth, melanin, DNA, um, fucking quantum physics as well, it's a space-time. And all that shit is emergent. It just means it comes from something else. So that something else is the thing you need to be talking about. Because niggas always trying to figure out how to take this spiritual shit and change the physical world. Like, if you told a nigga you can't change the physical world with this shit, how many niggas would still be interested? Nah, because they just wanna, they want, they want superpowers. You ever heard of Admiral Byrd going to Antarctica in the 1900s? Yeah, I've heard of, um, yeah, he, I, I think he, he took a, a personal trip by himself um, I saw somebody said he had videos, but I, I don't know. But I mean, <sighs> how do I want to say this? It's Admiral Byrd versus 
how many how many people who have studied this for a lifetime as well? You know, like because most people are looking for a seed of doubt, you know, a reason to doubt the things that they think they know. And that's that's okay. That's wonderful. But a seed of doubt isn't knowing. It's just the absence of knowing. That's why so many motherfuckers are comfortable with, well, I don't really know. Well, then what are you going to do to know? Is it even possible to know? And if not, then what are you talking about? Why are you talking? All right. There's so much, there's so much more evidence aside from, you know, Mr. Bird stuff. Like, um, like I was watching the Joe Rogan episode where the guy who talks about, um, uh, ancient civilizations with advanced technology. Um, and he was talking to some guy who claims to be a skeptic and I'm not, I'm not saying who was right or wrong, but there are certain things you have to take into account when being skeptical, even on a healthy, natural basis. You know, you, you gotta be, you gotta have a way to determine what is or isn't a thing. There has to be some kind of system. And yes, you could possibly be wrong, but, unless you risk being wrong, you can't be right. That's how it goes. You, so, you know what I mean? You go where the evidence is. And that... I mean, the physical world, it's, it's, it's a sphere. Like, we've known it's a sphere for millennia. Like, thousands of years, we've known it's a sphere. Like, people who, like, anyone who's saying, well, because NASA told you, da-da-da-da-da, that's because they that's this is their first time thinking about it aside from what they were told. So but they because they believe what they were told and they didn't, they didn't take the time to figure out why. Look, bro, that's fucking elementary school science. Because they didn't pay attention and they didn't understand, they just took somebody's word. Now they feel cheated. All right? So yeah, go please understand. Go go um go look up Admiral Byrd most certainly, man. You know, hear the different sides to the shit. <clears throat> but look at don't don't look at it from well I don't really know it's all just interesting to me well why is it interesting I hate when people say that shit it's just interesting to me no it's not there's a reason it's interesting there's a reason it's interesting well that's interesting nothing's intrinsically interesting it's interesting because you have an interest it's about you and see look this is this is the spiritual shit bro it's it's not about you know the the what shape the planet is it's clearly a sphere. <clears throat> It's about you. It's about that whole world on the other side of that fourth wall. It's about you. What is you, and how are you? Fi- how are you shaping and designing that? Because if you just say on the other side of the fourth wall, it's just all infinite mind. Then, then you'd have to ask, well, what about that wall? Is is changing this? Because the body's not on that side of the fourth wall. You had. You, there's more to reality than just some infinite mind thinking yay the nazis back with time travel claims yeah the nazis was some motherfuckers man the third reich was on it but <laughs> i ain't gonna lie yeah, the nazis the nazis was doing all kind of crazy shit bro them niggas didn't think it was ever gonna end <laughs> yeah they was going for it <sighs> and yeah look up some of the uh look up some of the things they were researching yeah, look, they were doing they were doing shit all over the planet, bro. Look up look up some of the shit they was researching. It's, it's interesting stuff. It's interesting ideas. <clears throat> but a lot of what they were doing was trying to take occult stuff and and map it into physical reality. Like trying what most of these niggas is doing now, trying to get some kind of superpower. Like I would I'll tell you. You can you can change the physical world with spiritual stuff, but Give up, give up trying to do it first, because then that's what you, that's what's going to be driving everything you're doing. Give up trying to control the physical world. Fuck the physical world. Like, that's the point. That's the point. It's not to wake up all the niggas on the planet and we just have a happy nigga planet living harmoniously, eating veggies in the, in the jungle or some shit. Like, nigga, that's, that's dumb as fuck. Even when you play Call of Duty Zombies, they just keep coming back infinitely. They're supposed to. Yeah, like, bro, the dead niggas are supposed to be dead. Like, think about out of all the trillions and trillions of cells in your body, how many of them are actually involved in the process of, of the body's awareness? 
if all the reality is one thing, it's one body, how much of it needs to be involved with the process of awareness of self? Very little. Most of it is maintaining the system at large. Most niggas is going to be zombies. Most motherfuckers here are zombies. See, when motherfuckers think about this shit, they think about it so human. Most of the most of the life on the planet is like that. The only place where you got motherfuckers being self-reflective on an existential level is humanity. It is homo sapien. That's the only place that's happening. A small percentage of the whole. And then a small percentage of that whole is what you're looking at. Niggas out here trying to wake folks up. They don't get it. Fuck out of here. Them niggas don't get it at all. The zombies will keep coming back because this is what this is where they're supposed to be. <laughs> I gotta get the three meteors to listen to 115 in Kino. What? Gotta get them three meteors to listen to 115 in Kino, bro. I don't know what's going on. Speaking of zombies, Haiti got it going on. Haiti Bing had it going on. All right. <clears throat> I tell you, man, this shit can be, it's, it's very simple, dude. The spiritual stuff is very simple. But uh, the hardest part, which is the hardest part of most things of these days, is getting through the bullshit. You know, getting through, getting through all the different things everybody wants to say. And it's, and it's, cra- and it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy. And it's trying to, to navigate your way through it these days because everybody's allowed to say whatever they want and everybody's right. And so you don't necessarily ever develop mechanisms for discerning truth in things. You just say this is truth and that's how it's supposed to work. It 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 it's untenable. I, mean, I ain't play I ain't played Call of Duty Zombies. I'm not even that good at Call of Duty, to be honest. I won't even lie. <laughs> I'm not even that good. All right. Before I kill this, one more time through the fourth wall meditation. All right. Remember, you can you can do anything with it. Uh, you can do it anywhere. But like I said, it's probably best you know get a little high or you know get get you do some deep deep breathing. You know whatever gets you where you, know, you can be still for a minute and focus on on your intent and your perception. All right. Look, carrot. So yeah, say the word carrot. There's a place where that goes from thought to activating the body. There's a space in between there, okay? It's that fourth wall. If you're not familiar with what the fourth wall is, it's like in a television show where one of the characters in the show will look directly in the camera at the audience. Or maybe sometimes you live in life and some, some stupid shit happened and you turn your head and look at the camera to the audience. You know, we all do it, but this is the thing. That's the direction of go within. That's one way to access it. I generally get people to access it through their psychology, which is which, which is what, what's mostly going to populate the things on the other side of the fourth wall. And if you don't get through your own psychology, you're not going nowhere else. See, that's the shit that holds you here. It's not it's not sin. It's your psychology. It's your attachment. It's your agreement to the shit. So what you're doing when you're doing the fourth wall meditation is. You want to feel out the place where that where that thought goes from a thought to the intention to begin moving the body. Okay. Usually it all happens so quickly and you're not paying attention, you miss it. You want to catch the subtlety in it so that you can start to feel out that fourth wall. You can start to feel your intention push up against it. Right rather than just flow right through it. Okay. Um yeah, like I said, when I come back out with the um the next season of the shitstorm, uh, I'm gonna talk more about it. Um, but I wanted to leave a little bit just just in case, cause I got I got plenty of shit I can give motherfuckers on how to do this shit, and none of it has anything to do with with your melanin, or your DNA, or your Kundalini upgrade. Like niggas is so dumb, niggas is so dumb. <sighs> It's not the magnetosphere around the planet. It's not quantum physics. All that shit is all that shit is space time, and space time is emergent. Is it possible to explain it like you're talking to a Brandon? Well, <clears throat> I was trying to. I mean, what what did not? Well, what was what was confusing? I would say rather, or where did it seem blurry? Because, like I said, carrot. 
there's a point where there was nothing. Then there's the thought or the idea of carrot, that intention. It pushes towards that fourth wall and right through it. And then the body starts to say carrot. It sets itself up. Like even before the word carrot comes out of my mouth, there are already systems moving to get it ready to go. So it's the same process, but on the other side of that fourth wall. The fourth wall is very, it's, it's easy to conceptualize, but this is what I'm saying about the go within. This is where you can see your own fourth wall. You need to be able to, to interact with it. I remember one time I was, uh, I was nice and high boy. And like, this was the first time it, uh, it hit me on how to do it properly. Um, but I was just sitting there listening to people talk and, you know, I spend most of the time listening in my head, you know, thoughts, thoughts or whatever. And, um, then I started talking and I could feel the whole movement from the thought to the actual, um, verbalization. And so I had to stop talking <laughs> so I could, so I could calibrate where it was at. Uh, but then, but this, see, this is one of the interesting implications of that. It's not simply that I'm doing that. Everyone else is doing that as well. You know, you look at the person's physical body. It's an outward manifestation of something that's, that's um, like, uh, what's the example I want to use? Um, light going through colored glass. It's the same light, but it's been um, conditioned by the, by the glass to, 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 I guess you could say vibrate in a certain way, which is going to give you the... Um, the light frequency, but, but the bigger point is, is condition. Okay. You know, everybody has their, everybody has that thing where they're speaking from that direction and the direction of within is not a space time direction. It's not a space time direction at all. That's the biggest point. So the fourth wall is the barrier between thought and physicality for your own, for personal, in, in a personal sense, I would say in a personal sense. Because if we start talking about reality at large, it gets more complicated. I'm only talking about in the personal sense. Why am I talking about it in the personal sense? Because like I said before, the idea of simply having a propositional knowledge of how to describe reality at large doesn't tell you how to participate in it. And that's what I'm trying to focus on is how you participate. Because participatory knowledge, knowledge that you you, you know by participating, is a completely different type of knowledge. For example, um, how to drink a beer. That's participatory knowledge. We, I could explain it to you in steps, but then I would always miss steps. Okay, because it, it's something you have to do to know. Like if a, a two-year-old, they're not going to know how to drink out of this bottle, right? Well, maybe a two-year-old. I, I don't know about kids like that, to be honest. I'll say a one-year-old, okay? One-year-old. They're not going to know how to drink out of a bottle properly. You know, but it's something by participating, you learn how to do. And there's no proposition I could tell you. Or, or the propositions can only go so far. You have to start participating to know how to do it. And that's part of... See, some people try and get into telling you about participating in, in, in your own spirituality, but most of them are stuck in space-time, descriptions of space-time from Western science. And so they don't get what it means. They're like, oh, go put some honey on your heel after you get out of the shower and crack an egg on your head, and that'll give you good luck. Like, think of what? Shut up. Ugh. Ugh. Leave coffee beans for, for, for Legba. And if you don't get that nigga some Starbucks and quit playing like you old school nigga, what the fuck is this? Ugh. So yeah, most people when they're talking about participating in this in their spirit or their own spiritual work, they're telling people stuff from space time, and that's the wrong direction. Like that's most people, most people's biggest problem is they're facing the wrong direction trying to do this stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the fourth wall meditation. If you want an idea what the fourth wall is, if it's still you know a little blurry, once again, it's just like in a television show where one of the people in the show will look straight into the camera at the audience. That's the fourth wall. Like I'm do I'm looking I'm looking at it right now because you niggas who are in the thing or who are watching this, you're not gonna like you're not here. I'm looking into the camera, okay. But so it's not about the direction you turn your head. It's about the direction you're turning your awareness. Because remember, you're not the body. So who, who gives a fuck where the body's head is turned? Uh, another example of the fourth wall. Um, um, ah, third person view in video games. You're sitting behind the, first, the fourth wall, looking through that third person view in a video game. 
I mean, you do the same thing with with the first person view, honestly. But the, the whole the whole relationship of you and the television, that's that's you're looking through the fourth wall into that reality, into that world. All right, you're watching a, a television show. You're looking in through that fourth wall into that three dimensional uh, space time continuum. What's another example of the fourth wall? And see, the, the reason the reason I'm bringing up the fourth wall is so that you can look at you can participate in your own work, and it's not just some some new proposition or new you know stated idea that you're trying to believe. It's looking at what you're doing already. That's what I'm I'm constantly saying. Look at what you're doing already. There's a spot like you can sit here and you can think carrot without saying it. You can do all you can think all kind of things without saying them. But when you when you say the things you're thinking, there's a movement, and the between those those two movements, or those two positions, you're going to find you're gonna you'll find the friction. You'll find the bump. All right, it's like blowing air through a blanket almost, or blowing air through a net. There's still something there that you hit, and the more that you can. You can practice that the more you can intuit and easily feel that and easily pull back from the physical world. You know, you don't have to do some super yoga position to pull back from the physical world. All right. It's just not necessary at all. Um, so, yeah, that's the fourth wall meditation. Um, timeless knowledge tour stop number eight tomorrow at 6 p.m. Um Aside from that, man, that's about it, bro. That's about it, bro. Yeah. Y'all have a great fucking evening.